Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to this video introduction to Affinity Designer. If you don't know, Affinity Designer is a software exclusively for Mac OS that it's coming to Windows in a couple of months. So what's the best time to start a series of tutorial about this? You have to think at Affinity Designer like a better version of Illustrator with some small tweaks to make it look and act kind of like Photoshop. It's nothing like the Adobe softwares and it's fully and completely integrated built on OS X and uses a, a lot of core animation. So I'm really curious to see how they will integrate all this stuff on a Windows environment. But let's take a look first of all to the current website of Affinity Designer. So if we go to affinity.serif.com, you can check to see or the designer, Affinity Designer application or Affinity Photo application that it's exclusively for photo retouching but we're gonna focus this series of tutorial only for now to Affinity Designer and Affinity Designer is a vector based software that you can buy for $69 depending where you are in which location but it's pretty cheap and it's just one-time payment so you buy it you have it that's it. No monthly fee, no bullshit around. So I really strongly suggest you to check this one. And you can sign up for the free beta that it's coming up in a couple of months for Windows and you can use it for free as far as it's in beta. So definitely worth it. This series of tutorials, it's gonna be focus on mostly the introduction of Affinity Designer, how to use it, how to customize, how to understand the interface, and now to create a series of small uh, design interaction. Maybe we can start a website, maybe we can start with small, simple tweaks. And sometimes I'm gonna focus a lot on specific sections of this amazing software because some sections are not complicated, but they have a lot of options. And sometimes they have some hidden options that if you don't use it much you probably will gonna miss it and it could create some issue because you want to achieve something that maybe you have an option and you don't know that you have that option but let's take a look super quickly at the interface how is the performance of the software and how I use it to uh, create the sunset theme design the interface is pretty standard it resembles a lot the interface of a standard Adobe software. We have the main toolbar, we have the left toolbar where as usual, like in a standard, in every standard software, we have all our tools to edit, design or create new shapes, form, graphics, all this kind of stuff. And then we have the right panel where we have our color wheel, the layer panel and all these uh, transform history and navigator option that are pretty similar to Photoshop or Illustrator. Of course, all these windows are detachable. You can drag and drop, detach it, close it, collapse it, reopen and put it back in place. You can create your custom layout and save this workflow as you want. Of course, it's pretty standard for pretty much all the software. The nice thing, the nice touch about Affinity Designer is that it trying as much as possible to remove the cluttering stuff, all the tools, so all the options and uh, icons and buttons that you have on a really big uh, and complicated software. So this software is complete. You can do pretty much everything you want. But as you can see, it looks like you have less options. The fact is that you don't have less options, but are better organized compared to Photoshop or Illustrator. So for example, right now here on the left toolbar, if we take a look, we have only vector based options. We have text, shapes, the ability to put images, gradients, vector brushes, and select elements or no tool. But what if we wanna do some pixel stuff? You have a different persona, that's the key option, the key main feature of Affinity Designer is the persona uh, screen. So right now we are in the draw persona that it's mostly and only vector based. If we switch to pixel persona, you will notice that the tools on your left toolbar are changed. Now you have the 
standard selection like in Photoshop you have the lasso selection you have the pixel brush and now you can paint in pixel on your canvas you have the bucket magnifying glass and smudge tool burn tool and all these other mostly related pixel based tool that in Photoshop you had to hold on a button and access the sub tools here everything is separated by persona so we have a third persona also that it's really powerful it's really important it's called the export persona the export persona mostly is used when you're done when you have to export your website or your design or whatever you're doing you can of course with the usual common key like command or control if you're on windows shift Alt and S and it's gonna open the export window with all the option to export PNG, JPEG, GIF, TIFF, PSD, PDF, SVG and EPS and you have a bunch of options inside every single of these elements but the export persona gives us the ability to fully control all the slices, options and sections that we wanna use to export. So for example, if I want to export the header, I select of course the slice tool, I cut the header and this section now it's accessible in a panel where I have the collection of all the slices instead of layers where I can rename my slice like header and I have the export options here with all the options that I can access and I can change this setting slide per slide so if these I want to create another slide that exports just the title I can check these and export these in PNG and here I can export everything together or I can export one by one and it's gonna ask me where I want to export this stuff this is pretty great so you have these three different options uh, three different personas where the tools update itself and changes based on the type of persona that you selected. Here in the export option you have also default option to export in rating already or 5k like you can export in three times the actual size of the image and it's pretty great. So if we go back to the draw persona and we take a look more about this toolbar you will notice here a lot of tools of course are hidden or you cannot select it because you have to select one specific layer or group in order to activate these tools and every type of group you can activate a vector or a pixel group every type of group has a specific set of tools but if you're not satisfied about these tools a cool thing that you can do you can right click and activate the customize toolbar option now here you have the full list of all the toolbars tool that all the tools that can go in the toolbar and you can reorganize order remove by simply drag and dropping in the position that you want these dash lines are the separation blocks so you cannot put anything in between here these are the separation but you can reorganize the stuff if you want in between or attach to something else so you have full control and if you mess up something around you can just drag and drop the default toolbar on top and it's gonna reset everything you can also choose to show just the icons or show the icon plus text especially at the beginning if you're not really familiar with the software of the interface having this icon plus text is really helpful so you can have a glimpse of what kind of tool are related to but after a while icon tool pretty great and this toolbar is fully customizable for your options and your needs let's take a look at a little bit how the layer system works we're gonna of course do this in a future lesson more thoroughly this is just a generic overview but the layer toolbar the layer panel here organizes stuff in a completely different way compared to Photoshop It's more likely uh, similar to Illustrator but in a better and organized way so if we open here first every time we have a layer you have between brackets the explanation of what type of layer is this is a layer group it means you can open it and inside you have all the elements that are inside let me select a specific layer for example i have the home layer that is the full design and inside we have the header that is another group 
we have the menu that is another group we open again and we have the border top that is recognized as a curve so this is not just a layer the layer recognizes the type of element that you have inside the layer so if you have a text a rectangle or some specific links for example here i have in the links group i have the contact text this is recognized as an art text the background the system knows the software knows this is a rectangle so it's it's writing rectangle here you can create both vector or pixel layer. You cannot use vector stuff on pixel layers or pixel stuff on vector layers. And this separation is pretty useful to maintain everything separated and everything better organized. Another cool thing that I want to show you is the power of renderization or the pretty much infinite zoom that this thing has. So if we zoom in here, of course, this is a pixel element. This is a PNG that I imported. And as you can see, it's creating all this pixelation because we are at 568% of zoom. But as you can see here, the text, it's fully rendered and super sharp. And is the same for if we have a vector element, for example, a bar, or if we have a rectangle, or if we have whatever vector element, it's super great to render. So if we zoom more, look what happened, we leave the zoom, it renders completely and it's super sharp. We are at 8,000%. Do we want to zoom more? Of course we want to zoom more. Look at that. Look how sharp it is. Right now we have a 225,000%. We can zoom until I think a million or a billion percent. Look at that. We have, we are right now at 28 million percent, <laughs> something like this, but this is the power render. And it's super fast, of course. If you scroll back and we release the control key or the option key to remove the zoom, the rendering of the entire page is super quick. So look at that. As soon as we remove, it renders. It renders. So this is a really powerful zoom, even if your uh, canvas or your file is pretty heavy, you have a lot of options, a lot of layers. These rendering stuff and this zooming stuff, it's, it's pretty great. It, I never encounter any problem about this and it's just amazing how sharp all this stuff is. And the good thing about this is not like in Photoshop that if you zoom after a specific point it just stops, it doesn't zoom anymore and if you ever had problems aligning some specific element to the grid, it's kind of like terrible, it's kind of really, really gross. Of course, also here you have the option of use hardboard. I created this layout of Sunset in the version 1.3 where hardboards weren't implemented yet. But there's not a problem because the system is pretty smart. So if we have right now, we are selecting in the home, we are in this situation, we access the sub tool of the arbor tool we can insert the arbor and the arbor as you notice has been inserted exactly to wrap all our visible elements look at that we just auto generated an arbor based on what you can see in your design in your layout and of course the arbor wrapped everything inside this group layer called Arbor. Of course, we can rename the Arbor pretty quickly. So let's say home. We can duplicate an Arbor. So if we grab with the Arbor tool, we grab on a side, wherever here we press Alt option and we drag and drop, it's going to duplicate everything. It's going to create another Arbor with the same name. It's not going to create your Arbor copy one or home copy one and you have all the layers separated here. And did you notice I duplicated this entire full layout full of images, text. Did you notice how quick, fast was it? Like no waiting time, no rendering time. It's just like pretty much real time rendering and it's just amazing, it's pretty great. You can of course create an artboard by just dragging and drop on a specific section, reorder. And you have this smart guide that of course you can activate and deactivate in this option here, you have full control of your snaps. If you want to activate something or maintain a specific snap to the grid, a snap to the element and all this kind of good stuff. 
Well, it's pretty much it for this quick, super quick introduction to Affinity Designer. I wanted just to give you an overview of the things that are most impressive for me, like the speed of rendering of specific vector elements, the ability to handle in a proper way both vector and pixel layers, and this nice, fully integrated and fully functional Arbor method that is really important for web design. This was the first lesson and let me know in the comment below if you like this lesson, if you like this format of this lesson and what you want to see if you want to see some tutorials about Affinity Designer. Let me know in the comment, let me know by giving a thumbs up or leave a comment below. Let me know if you're really interested in this stuff, if you want me to go more deeply and what you want me to do because I'm gonna start, of course, the first five, six, maybe seven lessons by analyzing all the different options that you have, all the different tools and all the different screens. But after a while, it's a pretty streamlined software. So uh, I'm gonna exhaust all the arguments to show you how to use the software and how to use all the tools. So the best way to learn a new software is to actually, is to actually create something. So. You want me to create a set of icons? You want to you want to see how to create a custom set of icons? You want to know? You want to see how to create a design of a website? You want me to create a specific typography type of poster or deplian or flyer? Let me know. Uh, give me a list of all the things that you would like to know how to create in Affinity Designer and I will be sure to create one specific tutorial for all the stuff that you want. So thank you again guys for checking this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. Either way is just awesome. Thank you again guys and I'll talk to you in the next video.